Sports Animation. Every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday at 6 p.m. The weather is very nice here. The landscape is very beautiful. In the heart of this village, a fascinating story was about to take shape. It was here that a young man named Joshua was born, destined to defy convention and explore the depths of faith. Joshua is a young man determined to follow his spiritual vocation, despite the opposition of his parents, who see him aspiring to a life of poverty. His steadfastness in the face of their disapproval underlines his devotion to God. Good boy. Your dad and I would like to know what you would like to be when you grow up. Yes, my son. Tell us what you aspire to. Okay, mom and dad. I want to become, huh? You'd like to be a great doctor, wouldn't you? My son. No, mom. A great banker, isn't he, my son? Don't forget what you used to say to me when you were little. No, I don't like bankers, they're cheapskates. Is it because your ex-boyfriend was a banker at the time and wouldn't give you any money that my son won't be a banker anymore? Besides, I don't like doctors and the whole medical profession. They never have time for other people. And they're too big-headed. So stop going to the hospital for treatment. My child, don't listen to your father. You're going to be a great doctor for me. I'll be very proud of you. Did you see? He'll be a doctor, not a banker. Why you want to live your dream through your child? Let the child become a banker if he wants to. Daddy. Daddy. I don't want to become a banker. That's it. I won. I knew my son would never let me down. I wouldn't want to be a doctor either. What? <laughs> it's not over yet. So what do you want to be, my son? I'll be a great pastor. What? My heart. Honey, what do you have? Looks like I've already started deliveries. Run fast. Go get me some water. How's it going? I'm fine. Joshua. What did you just say? I said I want to become a pastor. What? Of all the jobs in the world, this is the pastor's vocation that you've found? Honey, please give me the remaining water. Who advises you on this trade of poverty and misery? You'll soon change your mind about becoming a pastor. I didn't send you to school to become a poor preacher. That's what I want. It won't be in my lifetime. I won't deny you the right to go to church. You can even spend your nights there if you want. But I don't want you to go broke. We're not going to stay in this poverty forever. You, at least, have to do a good job to get us out of this precarious situation. Calm down, darling. Joshua is just a little boy. He'll come around eventually. Shalom Sister Georgette. How are you and your household? We're fine, Basto. I hope you are well too. Yes, I give thanks. Your boy came crying to me at the office today, saying he'd like to become a pastor, but that you're against his choice. Is this true? Yes, Basto. We are against. And why is that? Aren't you Christians yourself? Why refuse your child the chance to serve God? May I ask you a few questions? I'm listening. How many years have you been a pastor? It will soon be 25 years. Okay, that's your old motorcycle parked at Mikano's behind the church, isn't it? But why these questions? I saw you this morning dragging your old motorcycle to church. Normally, the brand of motorcycle you're riding doesn't even exist on the market anymore. It's already obsolete. It's not this life of misery that I would want for my child. A normal man can't work for 25 years without being able to buy even one good means of transport. It's deplorable. Why does it bother you? So it doesn't mean anything to you? 
take a look at your living conditions. You've been wearing the same outfits for months. Doesn't that tell you something too? God's house is not a fashion show or a place of business. The most important thing for me is to teach and edify God's people. So even when your children are malnourished, and you're unable to pay for your wife's medical care until she dies, that doesn't mean anything to you either? Why are you trying to bring back these bad memories, Sister Georgette? I just wanted to tell you that I don't want this mediocre life for my child. It's not your fault, Sister. I'm the one who chose to dedicate myself to the Lord. I accept my living conditions and I'm not ashamed of them. In my humble opinion, if your son truly has a vocation to become a servant of God, don't stop him. Let God act in his life according to his desires. Have a nice day. Thank you and good day to you. Lord, give me neither poverty nor riches, but grant me only what I need to live according to your desires. For in abundance, I might deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Or, pressed by poverty, I could start stealing, and thus dishonor you, my God. Thank you Lord for this wonderful day that you have blessed me with. I'm going to church to pray a little, and see if there's a service I can do to help God's house. Just look. Look at the pastor. He passes. <laughs> He's the poorest pastor I've ever met in my life. There are poorer people than him. I assure you my girl. In fact, He's not even a pastor yet. He's probably in his final year of theology or Bible studies. He hasn't even finished yet, and he's already unhappy as it is. My child will never do this job. And if it's his vocation, how will you do it? I'm going to change his vocation, believe me. <laughs> Happy arrival, Georgette. Thank you, darling. Where is Joshua? He must be in church. He told me he should go see his spiritual pastor. Okay. Is our son really becoming a pastor? Yes, darling. There's nothing we can do. It's God's will. As long as he's happy on the path he's chosen, that's fine. What's more, it's a grace for us to have a man of God among our descendants. Okay. Happy arrival, sister. Thank you, Mama Joshua. How's your house? All is well. Your nephew told me to say hello, and to give you a little envelope. Many thanks to him. I hope he's doing well for me. Yes, he's fine. In fact, he was the one who dropped me off. We've come together, but since he was already late for work, he couldn't wait any longer. Okay. And Joshua... Where is he? Joshua must be in his second home. He must surely be at church. That's right, sister. Your nephew says he wants to be a pastor. That's nice, my sister. It's a grace for us. What gracious. When will he give you a present too? Didn't his cousin just make me an envelope? He will too, sister. These prayers will already be a blessing for us. Blessing with an empty pocket, right? It's not all about money, sister. Besides, there are wealthy men of God. Maybe my nephew will be too. How many wealthy people do you know? I know several. Do you know Pastor Zango? Who's it again? You're not even in this country. He's the prophet who's all the rage now. A minute's consultation with him costs hundreds of dollars, sister. His church is packed like crazy. Really? Of course I can. I can think of several who have the same background as he does. Interesting. Do you even know Pastor Tao? No more. He is one of the richest men of God in this country. His house is built on acres of land. How can a normal person build a house on acres of land? How many rooms can he live in at a the time? They've got the money, sister. If it's for the material good, forget it. They've got it in spades. In fact, I go to his church too. He performs many miracles. I see. 
I thought all pastors were as poor as Pastor Paul and his gang. These are not ambitious. They have no prophetic power. The two I just mentioned are very strong. That's what makes them so rich. I see. Are you sure our son will be able to wait for this level? He'll have to get out from behind the poor local pastors and join the ranks of the big boys. If he's with them, he'll end up like them. I see. Thank you so much, my son. I enjoyed your preaching this evening. Continue to be a good servant inspired by the Holy Spirit. Many thanks, Papa Paul. But many had criticized my preaching. They say I preach too much about salvation and sanctification. Don't listen to them, my son. Our role as pastors is to bring souls to God, not to lose them. Yes, but they say I act like an old man. They prefer me to preach about current events. Especially about prosperity, abundance, marriage, etc. You must do what God wants you to do, not the will of your followers. Being a pastor is a great responsibility entrusted to us by God. We don't become shepherds by pleasure, but by calling. God does not call us to please human beings, but to lead them to do His will, so that they may have salvation. If you fail in your mission, know that you will be accountable to your God. All right, Papa Paul. Ah, you're home at last. Yes, Mom. Your aunt Claire was visiting with your cousin. All right, then. I hope they're doing well. Yes. Your cousin even made me an envelope. Thanks to him. May God bless him abundantly. When will you be able to do something like this for your aunt? Every time. It's your cousin who always comes to our aid in this house. Whereas you, our son, who are supposed to help us, are incapable of doing so. If it wasn't for my nephew's help, I'd be dying in a hospital bed with no money for my care. Even your father confirms that your cousin helps him a lot. And yet you're older than he is? Stop making these kinds of comparisons, Mom. Life isn't a race. The time will come when you will also benefit from me. By doing what? By being a poor pastor? I pray for you every day. This is already very important. The best is yet to come. Don't go looking for a job to do. I heard mom. I'm serious my son. You have to leave the company of those poor pastors you keep. If you want to become a great and influential pastor, you must associate with those who are already influential, my boy. What do you mean, mom? Leave Pastor Paul and his band of wretches. No, Mom. This man is a spiritual guide for me. It is thanks to his teachings that I am growing spiritually. He is a true man of God. Does he make you grow spiritually with an empty pocket? See for yourself what he's like. What can he bring you that's special? Not everything is earthly wealth. Divine riches and salvation are most important. In any case, I'm tired of carrying on taking care of you at your age. You need to grow up a bit. Don't worry, Mom. God is in control of everything. Let me pray with you before you go to the market. That's all you know how to do. You're incapable of saying, Mom, let me drop you off at the market. Since you don't even have a car tire. Please hurry, I'm leaving. Lord Jesus, you who offered yourself to the Father out of love for us, we wish, guided by your Holy Spirit, to respond to your love by consecrating ourselves to you. We entrust to you our past, our present and our future, our professional activities and our simplest actions. We offer you our joys and our sorrows, so that the love with which you have loved us may keep us in you and abide in us forever. May the fire of your love set the whole world ablaze. We pray Amen. Amen. Hey, Lord. Is this how everyone who decides to work for you suffers? I don't mind the mocking looks from outsiders, but when it comes to my own family, it really hurts. A few months later, Joshua was consecrated a pastor. But this had changed nothing in his parents' perception. For them, his choice of life was a mistake. After his consecration, Joshua felt even more hopeless than before. He was ridiculed by his peers and community members, who saw his simplicity and lack of worldly success as incompatible with the role of pastor. Even his wife, 
Diane, demanded a more luxurious lifestyle. My dearest ones in Christ, today I'll be preaching on sanctification. In the scriptures, we learn that God's will for us is our sanctification. That's why it's essential to pursue sanctification, because without it, no one can see the Lord. To be sanctified means, to be set apart, to be consecrated, to be dedicated as sacred, to be seen as holy. Living in sanctification means remaining faithful to the Word of God, maintaining a fervent prayer life in order to resist temptations of the flesh, and renouncing worldly values in order to devote oneself fully to the holy values of the Kingdom of God. That pastor came up with his weird themes again there. If I knew he was going to lead today's service, I was going to stay home. I assure you everything my girlfriend. This pastor bores me so much. He's not dynamic at all. These themes are not at all motivating for the young people that we are. I wonder what planet he's even from. Can't you see how he addresses himself? He can only give advice. Please, ladies. Calm down a bit, and let us follow the pastor's preaching. Who does this lady even talk to? See what she wore. Take it easy, girlfriend. She's the pastor's wife. And she is dirty like that? Besides, I'm going home. Let's go. I'm going home myself. Are those two women making fun of me like that? I really enjoyed my husband's sermon today. As usual, he always preaches beautifully. Isn't that Pastor Joshua's wife walking around like that? I'll wait to take her. Apparently you've left the cult. Yes ma'am. Thank you very much for your help. You're welcome. But I don't know you. Really? Yes. It's that even bizarre. Everyone knows me in this country. Really? I'm Pastor Tao's wife everyone's talking about. You've got to be kidding me. So you're Madam Sarah Thou. Wife of the wealthiest pastor of our time. Yes, it's me. Pleased to meet you. It's a pleasure for me too to make your acquaintance. So you usually walk like this to get home at the end of each celebration? Yes, ma'am. We didn't yet have our own means of transport. But that's not normal for a pastor's wife like you. You're not just anyone. You should be treated like a queen. Don't you know? This is what we have at the moment. That's because you don't want to, of course. How can we not want an easier, more beautiful life? Your husband is also a pastor like mine. That's all I can say. I think you're right. I think I know what you mean. Take my business card. You'll find my number on it. I invite you next weekend to the pastor's wives salon, of which I am the director. Thank you very much. I won't miss it. All right, then. It will be a pleasure for me to see you. All right. Take me down right in front of the hospital. Okay. Save me, pastor. My son is possessed. Jesus Christ. But what's actually happening to him? Where is he? He's at the house. He's behaving strangely. Take me to him. Where's your son, ma'am? He's the one sitting next to. Hello, young man. How are you? You're come here. You're come here. You're come here. Come here. You. I'm talking to you, young man. Are you all right? Oh, it's you, mummy. The mechanic is here. Please, Joe, give me some of that weed. I haven't had anything yet today. You're not possessed. You have another problem. Your son is not possessed, ma'am. He's drugged. What? I won't allow you to say such things about my son. What kind of pastor are you? You'd be better off sending your son to a rehab center. That's not a pastor's job. I'll pray with you for his recovery. Call 7270 and they'll come get him. The blood of Jesus on you. My child is not a drug addict. He was bewitched by his village aunt. That's what all the men of God I called had told me. Why are you the one who sees the opposite? Then call the other pastors to deliver him. Good recovery to him by the grace of God. 
I'll accompany you in prayer, madam. You needn't worry. By God's grace, he'll get better. Then I can come and do a spiritual journey with him so that he doesn't relapse into drugs. Get out of my house. Good evening. That's what people call pastor. He has no anointing. He doesn't even know how to work miracles. Which man of God should I call now? If I take her to pastor town now, they'll tell me to pay for a consultation. And even after that, it could be a month before he sees us. I already paid them last week. But so far I haven't received an invitation from them. Welcome, madam. How can I help you? My sister pointed me here. My son is possessed. I've brought him here so that you can help me deliver him. You've come to the right place, ma'am. Have you been through the secretariat and the cashier yet? Because I haven't received any notification from them. Please, Pastor Zongo. I wouldn't like to go through all those protocols before seeing you. My son's case is urgent, and with the QIC out there, I don't think our turn will ever come. Everywhere I went it was always the same with a long queue. I pay for consultations but they never call me back. You have no right to come into my office without respecting protocol, madam. Please leave, back to the queue. Please Pastor Zongo, I can pay for everything. My husband is a former minister. I have the means to pay ten times your consultation if need be. What did I just hear? Did you just tell me that your husband was a former minister of this country? Yes, Pastor. That's the place to start. Sit down, I'll take you in. But you'll have to pay VIP rates. Agreed, Pastor. How it will? Your son really is possessed by three witches. There are two in his paternal family, and the last one is your co-wife. But I don't have a co-wife. What do you mean? Do you want to contradict what God has revealed to me or what? The two witches you mentioned must be his paternal aunt and my mother-in-law, respectively. Exactly. This is what was revealed to me. But for the third person I don't think so. You're a minister's wife, and you think you don't have a co-wife. Maybe you're even your husband's tenth wife. Really? Does that mean my husband had been cheating on me all these years? Thank God for his blessings in your life. Now you can check out. Okay. And my boy, has he been released yet? We haven't even started the delivery sessions yet. Oh. Your boy will spend 30 days here with us. And every day you have to pay $2,000. But it's very expensive. You either want healing or you don't. I don't have time. I have other devotees waiting for me. If you don't want to pay the fee, you can take your son back after paying the VIP consultation fee. All right, we'll pay. May God bless you. What's the matter, honey? Didn't you go to your pastor's wife's meeting anymore? I just got back. What's wrong? Why are you making that face? I'm tired of this life of misery you make me live. But why would you say such a thing, Diane, my wife? I had the shame of my life today at that meeting. I felt ridiculous and dirty in front of all those pastor's wives who were there. People looked at me and asked if I was really a pastor's wife. What were the other women like? Did they have two heads with six legs or what? Don't pretend you don't understand what I'm telling you, Joshua. I'm talking, of course, about our living conditions. As a pastor's wife. I don't even have a means of transportation. Not even a nice shoe to walk in. Look how I turned out. And it's all because of your lack of ambition. Look at how you dress to go to church. It doesn't honor us. People don't respect us at all. I refuse to be shamed every day in the street, on public transport, and everywhere I go. I've had enough. What do you want me to do now, honey? I'm a pastor, not a civil servant or a businessman. I don't have enough means yet. Please understand the situation. Be patient and everything will get better. I'll wait until when. My parents and family ask for my help, but I'm unable to help them, even though for them I'm a pastor's wife, so I must have money. Tell them my church isn't in the bank. 
We don't make money in church. Do you at least see your pastor colleagues? Of course, darling. I'm not blind. I don't think so. If you did, you'd understand that things aren't going well on our end. Stop comparing me to other pastors. Each to his own destiny. And your destiny is suffering. Isn't that the same Bible you use? These pastors you want to compare me to have views on me. What's more, they have their own church and they do what they want with it. I'm under an authority and it's the church that feeds me according to its convenience. So you're satisfied with the crumbs they give you? The others get rich and you're stuck in your miserable world. Stop talking about it. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Happy arrival my daughter-in-law. Thanks mom. Come and sit down don't just stand there. I brought you something to eat, mom. Thank you. Thank you very much. And your husband, how is he? He promised the doctors he'd come and pay the hospital bill today. Who? Even if he comes here, the only thing he can do is pray. As for your bills and ordinance, he has nothing to pay them with. Is that so? But I'm supposed to be released from the hospital today. We need to find another solution, Mom. As I speak, we have four months unpaid rent. Not to mention the electricity. We've been in the dark for a week. I even managed to pay for food thanks to my small business. I'd already warned my son. But he's stubborn. This pastor's life isn't rewarding. It's your own son who's not ambitious, Mom. If not, his other pastoral colleagues are doing very well. When you see their wives, they even surpass the wives of ministers and presidents. It's for me that's like that. My parents had warned me, but I'm also stubborn. I'd found a better job elsewhere, but I'd given it all up for your son, but now here I am. I'm so sorry, my daughter. I'm very worried about your husband. I don't know what's the matter with him. He seems to be suffering from the disease of poverty. He likes it the way it is. He tells me it's God. Which God? In any case. I'm going to ask my nephew for help. I'm ashamed to ask him for help again, but he's the only person who can help me in my condition. You have no choice, Mom. I'm home, darling. Are you still sitting? Aren't you going to cuddle me? Who are you cheating me with, Richard? Ra? What are you talking about, Mazalo? Who is my co-wife? Answer me. Did I ever tell you about a co-wife? You think I don't know what you're doing behind my back? No, it's not possible. Yes, I know what you're doing. My pastor told me everything. I warn you that your second wife is also involved in your son's illness. She's a witch, as are your sister and your mother. What's all this gibberish you've been talking about? How dare you accuse me of infidelity and call my mother and sister witches? That's what the pastor had told me when I sent our son to him. Who's this pastor lying about my private life? He's not lying, he's telling the truth. Alright, you'll go and live with your pastor. You'll form your own team of liars and witch detectors. What? Yes, I'm sick of you. Go and get my son out of this dump so I can take him to rehab. And I'll give you two weeks to get out of my house. Where do you want me to go? Stay with your pastor. Please darling forgive me. If you send me away where will I go? I don't care. Sorry. Pastor Joshua, we had received many complaints about you from the faithful. What kind of complaint? What did I do? The faithful complain about your preaching. They don't find satisfaction in what you say. Oh? But I'm not saying anything bad. Because of your preaching, many faithful are leaving our church to go elsewhere. You're ruining our church. Fewer congregants means less money in the treasury and fewer resources. We'll be forced to suspend you for a while. Pastor Shack, what am I saying that's bad in my preaching? I'm just following the Holy Spirit. Why do you want to follow the faithful instead of God's voice? We are all men of God, Pastor Joshua. You're no better or different from any other pastor in this church. Either comply with our laws or get out of here. We're not going to let you empty our church because of your lack of dynamism. A good pastor tells his congregation what they want to hear. We're not here to scare people or to remind them every time that they're sinners. 
Rather, we're here to reassure them of God's grace. But I'm not scaring anyone, Pastor Shaq. I only say what's in the scriptures. All you do is talk about sanctification, salvation, sin and the end times. Don't you know that these are the themes that shock God's people? But Pastor Paul disagreed with you. Pastor Paul is no longer with us. So things have changed now. We've come up with new strategies to fill this church. Okay, I get it. Happy arrival. Thank you, darling. What's wrong with you? I am suspended from the church until further notice. I am no longer allowed to preach. What? But why did they do this to you? Because I don't do what they want me to do. And I don't teach the way they want me to teach. That's it, then. Told ya. You're too soft, darling. I don't know any shepherd like you. You're neither cold nor hot. Just because I don't make noise like the others doesn't mean I'm soft. You don't use your potential. Not even one-tenth. What do you think I should do? Let's create our own church. Oh, no, you don't. I can't do that. I didn't receive this message from God. And what I'm telling you? Isn't it a message inspired by me? No, I don't think that's a good idea. For the time being, the Lord has told me to serve in the church in Damascus under an authority, in order to learn and better refine my ministry. The man you were learning under has already passed away. Let me remind you. All these young people who are here and who have taken over from you are normally your subordinates. You were consecrated two years before Pastor Ajak was, but he is your superior today. Even Pastor Mark and Jean are all your subordinates. You're right. Pastor Paul is no more. But before he died, he entrusted me with the spiritual life of the church. He entrusted you with the spiritual life of the church, but now you're being trampled underfoot. People flout your authority. Can't you see you're not growing? Wake up a little. This is God's finest doubt I am. God himself guards his church, not humans. He'll know what to do when the time is right. It's always the same story. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Acclaim the Lord. Let us thank the Lord for all He has done in our lives throughout this week. He has given us the breath of life and health. He has watched over our homes, our children and our businesses. You'd have to be ungrateful not to give thanks, my dear brothers and sisters. Let all those to whom God has done something during this week or this month, give their testimony accompanied by an offering to the Lord. Let each one give as he has resolved in his heart, without sorrow or constraint. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God has the power to fill you with all kinds of graces, so that, always having in every respect enough to satisfy all your needs, you may still have an abundance for every good work. It's only been three sessions that we've done together in this prayer cell, but I've already landed my job after three years of unemployment. So I'd like to give this envelope as a thank you to the Lord. I'd also like to make some promises. I'm going to find us a room of some size to accommodate ourselves. Because I'd like other people to have the opportunity to join us. This house is already very small for us, and I'll pay the rent and all the charges that will be associated with the new premises. Thanks be to God. My brothers and sister in Christ. You can't imagine what the Lord has done for me. As I speak, I am two months pregnant. Here's my Thanksgiving envelope. I'll also be making a donation for the cell. I'll take care of all the furniture inside the new premises that Brother Nestor has promised. God is truly wonderful. God is truly wonderful. I'd been thinking about it ever since, but I couldn't think of anything to say. I had the impression that God hadn't given me anything new apart from the breath of life, health, family and job I already have. But I just remembered that I've lost 10 kilos this month. If not thanks to God, thanks to whom? I too want to make an envelope to give thanks to God and also make a donation of my plot of two lots for the prayer cell. God has worked wonders for me too. 
I just found out this morning that my mother-in-law, who always comes into my home to insult me, is paralyzed. It's not over yet. I also learned a week ago that the pregnancy of my husband's chizza was spoiled. <laughs> Who can say that God is not good? I also offer you one of my cars, for all the trips of the cells leaders. God has truly done many things in our lives. Even the most neglected things are the Lord's work. Thank you very much for your kind words. God knows how to do things. My husband is here. But what's going on here? Happy arrival, darling. Happy arrival man of God. Mama Diane, can I talk to you for a moment? Okay, honey. I'll be right there. Here I am. What's going on in my living room over there? We're in a prayer cell, darling. What a prayer cell? I had set up a prayer cell in your absence, with a few acquaintances and with the churchgoers who were asking for you while you were away. What? And what's the point? It's to pray while you're away. Uh-huh. The church was closed while I was gone or what? Let them go worship in church. My house is not a place of worship. I told them about everything you're going through, and they decided to follow us. I told them you'd like to start your own prayer cell, not to say church. Oh, my God. This can't be happening. What you are creating is very serious. You're diverting the faithful from the church to your house. Don't you know I'll be punished? Who gave you the authority to lead God's people? I have no pretensions. I'm doing all this for you. It's you they want to follow, not me. I don't need it. I'm already under church authority and that's enough for me. The day the Lord tells me to found my own place of worship, I'll do it. For the time being, I don't want to rush down a path that isn't my own. What's happening to you, Joshua? You're going to go out and greet your followers. Go and reassure them. I'm going to put an end to this mess. You don't even know the opportunity we have before us. In just three sessions, this small audience has already given over $10,000, not even counting the envelopes I received today. What? I just heard $10,000, or do you mean $100? Where is the resemblance between $100 and $10,000? I did say $10,000. Not even counting today's envelopes with the promises in kind they've just made. There's someone willing to offer us premises and cover all our expenses. We have a car promise too. Car? Of course it is. There are so many promises that I can't mention them all. The list is at the show, so you'll have time to have a look. That's really surprising what you just told me. Wow. You've just realized the opportunity we've been missing ever since, haven't you? Now go and reassure your followers. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I would like to thank you for this initiative that you were able to manage in my absence. It testifies to the seriousness and love you put into the things of God. Thank you very much for your dedication, but I'd like this initiative to end here. Our place of worship is the church, not this house. We want to follow you, dear Pastor. Yes, Pastor Joshua. We want to follow you. This cell has done us a world of good, Pastor. We've had countless miracles here. We'd hate to give it up to go to church. Be our conductor. This is how Pastor Joshua found himself creating his own church. At first, his intention was pure to offer a spiritual refuge to those in search of faith. But, as the saying goes, he who tastes gets a taste. Joshua soon discovered the material benefits and privileges of his new status, and the gifts and offerings poured in far beyond his expectations. He began to appreciate these tokens of material recognition, and soon the lure of gain became irresistible. His sermons, once full of sincerity, turned into calculated appeals to the generosity of the faithful. Promises of divine prosperity became the heart of his preaching. 
he set up systems to encourage regular and generous contributions, justifying his opulent lifestyle as a blessing from God. The first signs of doubt appeared among the older faithful. They remembered a time when Joshua preached out of conviction, not interest. Yet for every skeptic, there were dozens of new converts, seduced by his dazzling promises. Joshua's church was growing, but at what cost? The man who had begun with a pure heart was now mired in greed. Joshua was no longer the idealistic pastor he had been. He had become a false prophet, ready to do anything to maintain his flourishing empire. He's here, honey. The pastor is here. He's really there. Our super pastor. Our spiritual father. This pastor has blessed us so much. I assure you he's very good. He knows what to say and when to say it. Look how elegant my husband is. Now he looks like a minister. Before he wasn't at all. I'm so proud of him. Shalom. People of God. Welcome, welcome, dear brothers and sisters. Today is a blessed day, the day when we gather to celebrate the power of our faith and the infinite grace of our Lord. In this sacred place, we come together as a family, bound by our devotion to our Almighty God. Today, I invite you to open your hearts and let the Divine Light guide us in this spiritual celebration. Hallelujah. All glory to God. My dear, we have all traveled different paths to be here this morning. Some have come in search of healing, others in search of comfort. But I tell you that in this place, all your burdens can be laid at the feet of our Lord. Today, I bring you words of peace and hope. No matter what challenges you face, God is greater than any obstacle. Together, we can overcome all trials and reach new heights in our faith. May this celebration be a moment of renewal and connection with our Creator. Let's forget the worries of the outside world and immerse ourselves in the divine presence that surrounds us in this sacred place. Let us praise our Almighty God together. May this day be blessed and our faith strengthened. Let the service begin. Look at everyone. This is my son. This is my beloved son. It's time for deliverances and miracles. Let everyone with a problem approach the altar. Let the sick come forward to receive their healing. The time for miracles has come. I hope I too will have grace today. Madam, come. Yes, you in the black scarf. Come. Here I am, Pastor. Madam, you have been sterile for over five years, haven't you? Yes, Pastor. But how did you know? Glory to God. Acclaim the Lord. Madam, your misfortune comes from your own family. Your aunt is a witch. I sense it myself. But don't worry, madam. You have already been released from your aunt's grasp. By the end of the month, you will have a positive pregnancy test. Glory to God. So if you have faith that the Lord has already delivered you, do the necessary thanksgiving. Witness your faith and your gratitude to God. Don't be unbelieving. I can give everything to God. Even my houses and my cars. I've been looking for this pregnancy for a long time. May God bless you, sister. Drop by the secretariat to sign the necessary commitments for any in-kind donations. You can put your envelopes in the basket next to the door. After that first child, you'll be churning out children like flies. You'll have many more. Agreed, Pastor. Come along, sir. Why are you hiding? Come to the front. Here I am, Pastor. How long have you been blind, sir? Since I was born, Pastor. From now on, you will be able to recover your vision. Really? Take off your glasses and see now. I command it. Yes, I can see. Thank you, Pastor, for giving me sight. Please give thanks to God. I have the ability to perform all possible miracles. Don't be surprised, my dear. It was Chris himself who said it, not me. Read your Bible. But I've never had a miracle since I've been coming to this church. It's always the rich who get healed or the foreigners. Why not me? I've been sick for 10 years already. That's because you're poor, 
ma'am. Even God hates the poor. You don't bring anything concrete to this church. If you never receive your miracles, it's because you don't give enough to the Lord. The Bible tells us in Luke 6 verse 38. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure will be poured into your bosom, squeezed, shaken and overflowing. For you will be measured with the measure you have used. It's not me saying it. It's the word of God itself that bears witness. Know this, he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. And don't forget benevolence and liberality. For it's in such sacrifices that God takes pleasure. This is exactly what I was saying. Now it's time for general thanksgiving and tithing. Whether you're male or female. Whether you have received a special grace today or not, you must go forward to give your thanksgiving and your tithe. Put God to the test my brothers and sisters. Do it and see for yourself. The word tells us in Malachi 3 verse 10. Bring all the tithes to the treasure house, so that there may be food in my house. Put me to the test in this way, says the Lord of hosts. And you shall see if I do not open for you the floodgates of heaven, and pour out upon you blessing in abundance. One of the Lord with your substance, and with the first fruits of all your increase, then your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. So there's no excuse for not returning to God what God himself has given you. Praise Jesus Christ. As the pastor retires to his office, I'd like to remind you of a few of the week's announcements. Next Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. is the delivery session for all unemployed people and those with unstable financial situations. So if you're looking for a job, this is your moment to shine. Grab your entry ticket. It's only $150. The pastor declares with conviction that the gates of opulence will open. And that you will all be hired as soon as you leave this deliverance session. He adds that if you don't find a job after following what he's going to reveal to you, it's because you're lazy yourself, or because you refuse to do jobs like housework or babysitting. He also stipulates that his companies, which are obviously in the name of the church, will be hiring over 2,000 young people this quarter. But to benefit from this recruitment and for your CV to be taken into account, you need to take part in this delivery session. I was forgetting a very important part. <laughs> the pastor fervently asserts to all those whose financial situation is crippled, that he will fill your bank accounts with bundles of bills and that many will get the vision of winning numbers for lottery games. With God all things are possible, he says. Tickets are available from the church office. You can also contact me as soon as you leave the church for all your needs. Dearly beloved, Friday May 31st is the date of the gala dinner organized for all single people wishing to receive their wedding graces. Couples are also invited to this special dinner. If you're on your own, don't hesitate to pick up your $300 ticket. For couples, the ticket will be $450. The pastor prophesizes that your soulmate will be revealed to you at this spiritual dinner. Expect crossed eyes and stirred hearts that day. I won't miss it. Finally, the pastor invites you all. If you want to grow your money, invest your savings in his blessed enterprises. Say goodbye to financial worries and hello to a life of luxury and peace of mind. In the words of the pastor, on that note, I'd like to wish you all a very happy Sunday. I just gave all my business capital to the church today. I hope I'll get it all back a hundredfold, just like the pastor said I would. In any case I'm going to keep the faith. God will do something for me. But I don't have anything to eat at home today, do I? all in a day's work. Driver please. I'm going to Wonder Town. All right. It's five dollars. Hey, please sir I have nothing on me. I've given everything to the church. Please drop me off for free. Who's that one? So you pay the church for everything you've got and you're asking me to do it for free? Who do you think I am? If prayer is no longer free, do you think my cab will be? Forgive me.
tired, sir. I'm tired of walking. You haven't walked properly yet. If I were God, I'd take away your legs, which you even have for free. I wonder how a human being whom God created in his own image can be so foolish. My people perish for lack of knowledge. I really want to help her, but because of her church history, I'm going to let her walk for a while so she can learn her lesson. I've been told to put God to the test, but no one will take me for free. My foot hurts and I'm hungry. Never again will I give everything I have to the church. I will only give what my heart desires, and not foolishly follow others. Thank you very much. Never make those mistakes again, Mom. All right, sir. I'd like to thank you, my staff. It's thanks to you that our Sunday services and prayer sessions are always a success. Thank you, Sister Laura, for your closing announcements. They were fabulous. Thanks to you, ticket purchases are only multiplying. Please, dear Pastor. I'll do my best to send you your tips before the end of the day to encourage you. Thank you. I was forgetting an essential point. Please luck. Next time you want to tell me about someone to deliver, try speaking a little louder into my earpieces. I almost missed my target today. Look out for it soon. Sister Laura. Has the gentleman who helped us with the blind been paid? Yes, Pastor. He's already on the plane back to his country, along with all the simulator actors we've recruited. They're all well managed. Okay. Don't forget to recruit new faces for upcoming sessions. The recruitment team is all ready. Okay. Darling, you didn't take my requests into account in your celebration programs. Which request? I told you that my mother would like to market some products to the faithful after the celebrations. Normally, you'd have to announce this yourself or tell your private secretary. Honey, I can't tolerate that. The church is not a place of commerce where you can sell any product you want. Not just any product. These are your mother-in-law's products, I remind you. What's more, they're therapeutic products. All you have to do is tell them that these are blessed products that will quickly produce miracles, and they'll buy them. All you have to do is advertise the site, and they'll order online themselves. No, I don't want to mix it up with my ministry. Even my own mother came to me with a project she wanted to do at church, but I refused. She told me about it. But why are you doing this? Do you think the faithful are sheep? What are they if they're just your sheep? I hope you'll at least tell us about my orphanage project Diane's children that I'd like to launch. I need money to buy a new car. It's the money to create your orphanage, isn't it? Or car money. What do I have to do with creating an orphanage? I want money for something else. If there's any leftover, I'll see if I can round up a few children from my family to give them a few packets of rice and school supplies. I knew it. You say it as if you yourself were doing something good with church money. At least I'm investing and building the church. By the way, I haven't received my monthly transfer yet. I'll send it to you. Okay. Don't forget your appointments with the doctor. We need to see how Julie's condition is progressing. The lady to whom I promised the pregnancy this month. I'll be there within the week. Hello, doctor. Welcome, Mama Diane. How are you and the pastor? We're fine and you? It's okay. I see my husband's picture all over your wall. Your husband is God's representative on earth. He's the one who performs miracles. We just give each other medicine. Oh, I see. So how is Madame Julie doing? Will she be able to conceive as the diagnostics say before the end of this month? Yes, we're doing everything we can to get her pregnant. Besides, she wasn't sterile. Real sterile women have been excluded from our choices. We can't even risk sending a truly sterile woman to church. We risk shame. What did she have? It was just a block tube she had. We just exaggerated the diagnosis to make her think she was really sterile. Okay, I see. So that's the case for the cancer patients and diabetics you used to send for miracles? Yes, these are false diagnoses. Okay. Is it possible that AIDS miracles are also being faked? Yes, we can. I can handle it. 
I would like to inform you that I received my transfers yesterday. Thank you very much. We'd rather thank you for your cooperation. You're welcome. Thus began the rise of Joshua and his wife Diane, transforming their church into a thriving business. This continued for over a decade, propelling Joshua to become the most influential pastor and prophet in his country, and even internationally. He was worshipped as a quasi-divine, with the faithful willing to pay fortunes just to touch his jacket. Meanwhile, Diane became the most influential pastor's wife, their name on everyone's lips. Rumors circulated, but the Guru couple remained confident in their strategy. However, as the saying goes, everything in life has its end. Every glory has its end. Joshua's empire reached its apogee, then declined cataclysmically. I'm very happy. My son makes me proud today. I was wrong to have wanted him to abandon his vocation as a pastor. It's thanks to him that I travel all over the world today. As soon as people expect my son's name, all doors are open to me. Really, paradise begins on earth. I'm very lucky. Unfortunately my husband died very early without seeing his son's success. Oh, darling. I feel like all our businesses are collapsing. Investors are withdrawing their money every day, and if this keeps up, we are in danger of closing. Even the church isn't filling up like it used to, and the offerings aren't juicy anymore. I can see that too, darling. It's weird. Nothing has changed in our operating strategy. So we're going to have to find new approaches to overcome these difficulties. It really gives me insomnia. Calm down, honey. It'll be fine. Let's take a week to relax. It'll do good. And where will we go? We'll go to an island paradise somewhere. Alright, find the right place and let's go. Okay. What's wrong, lady? Policeman. I feel like I've been swindled by a pastor. What are you talking about, lady? He promised to cure my husband of blood cancer, and he had taken $100,000 from me. But my husband died suddenly yesterday. Because this false pastor had forbidden me to give my husband his pill under the pretext that he would be miraculously cured by God. Oh sorry for the loss of your husband. But why do you trust these crooks who abuse God's name to their own ends? Since when does a pastor become a doctor? I had witnessed several of his miracles where he cured many people of cancer and even AIDS. That's why I trusted him. Help me. Policeman. This man has ruined me. What's his name? His name is Pastor Joshua. The same Joshua? This is the fourth complaint lodged against him. We have already launched investigations against him. If we can gather enough evidence, you will have a favorable outcome. I agree. What's up? I don't think we'll be able to get married again. And why? I'm sick, Julian. What disease are you suffering from? Is your malaria the reason we're canceling our wedding? It's not about malaria. I'm HIV positive. What? But how is it possible? This is the result I received at the hospital this morning. The doctor sent me to Pastor Joseph of prayer healing. No. I don't believe this diagnosis. My God does not lie or make mistakes. We'll redo this test elsewhere because I don't believe in this result. It's true, darling. They did it more than twice in front of me and it was always positive. My only hope is past at Joshua A. It's just the money that's the worry. It takes a lot of money to get me fully delivered. I said that I don't believe this result and I don't accept it in the name of Jesus. I hope you didn't say anything to your mother and mother-in-law. Both already know, and your mom is against our union. Even after my recovery. Let's go see my doctor. You can see how the result takes time, can't you? It's certainly positive. At least stop being negative. Please come. Go alone. I'm afraid. What are you afraid of? 
Your fiancé is negative. Really? Did you check? Yes, Julian. I had it confirmed by ten other doctors. Stop crying. What did she say? You're negative. How is this possible? What do I do now to get my money back? Why aren't you jumping for joy after this good news? I've just sent a third of the money due to the pastor to start the treatment. You killed me. But why did you do it without telling me? I didn't want to die. This doctor and the pastor are swindlers. I'm going to lodge a complaint against them. What are you looking for, officer? Sit down so that I can consult you. You're under arrest for fraud and suicide. Forgive. I haven't done anything, it's Pastor Joshua who pays me for what I do. You've already sabotaged yourself. You'd better keep quiet. But what did you put on your head, Laura? Darling, come and see what your private secretary has put on her head. Call me Laura too, or too, sooner. My name is no longer Laura. Uh-uh. What's the matter with you? Mommy Diane. The hour is grave. As we speak, all the pastor's staff and the doctor are in prison. I'm the only one who can escape. What are you talking about? I'm sure it won't be long before the police arrive. In any case, I'm going far away from this country. You'd better run too. Why are they looking for us? We've got to get away before we figure out what's going on. Darling, we seem to be wanted everywhere. That's what Laura just told me. We've got to get out of here fast. And where will we go? We'll try to get to our villa in Dubai. Where are you going, sir? I'm going to Dubai. Let me see your ID. I've already handed everything over for checking. And what's your name? My name is Jack. Is this the name on your ID? Of course I do. Plus I have a diplomatic passport. Okay, boss. Please accept my respects. Who is it? He's my younger brother. We are together. Good evening, young man. I said good evening. Aren't you going to answer? Sorry, officer. My brother doesn't speak. He's a mute. I see. Have a nice trip. Thank you. Mom looks at Pastor Joshua and his wife. Pastor Joshua. Where did you find Pastor Joshua? Come back here, Olivia. Pastor Joshua. It's you, isn't it? But why did you dress up? So it was Pastor Joshua who dressed up like that. It was God himself who opened your back. It's not me. My name is Mamani. So it's not Jock, it's Momani now? You are under arrest. Stop the person behind him. She takes off. And that's the end of the animation. Pastor Joshua, his wife, and their entourage of swindlers have been apprehended by the authorities. They were found guilty of their misdeeds, and sentenced to heavy prison terms for swindling, fraud, and breach of trust. My dear friends, the disturbing story of Joshua and Diane reminds us of the complex reality facing pastors and religious leaders. How can a good pastor end up deviating from his original mission and become false under the influence of his environment? Pastors are human beings, subject to the same temptations and weaknesses as the rest of us. Some churches don't always take good care of their pastors, leaving them in conditions that make them vulnerable. They are often faced with heavy responsibilities and high expectations without sufficient emotional and pastoral support. Galatians 6, 2 teaches us, bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. A good pastor can be influenced by the desire for success, and recognition, encouraged by a society obsessed with notoriety, and wealth. Alas, this can lead to compromised values and questionable practices. 1 John 2 verse 15 warns us. Do not love the world or what is in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 
It's crucial that churches offer solid support to their pastors, providing them with a healthy, transparent and loving environment. Pastors must be encouraged to remain faithful to their vocation, and to rely on God's word for guidance. 1 Peter 5, 2-3 states, Feed the flock of God which is under your care, not under compulsion, but willingly, according to God, not for sordid gain, but with dedication, not as lording it over those who have fallen to you, but becoming the models of the flock. On the other hand, the actions of Joshua and Diana reaped the whirlwind they had sown. This reminds us of the importance of living with integrity, and acting with compassion towards others. My advice to you all is to remain firm in your faith, but also vigilant against false prophets and seducers. 1 John 4, 1 warns us. Beloved, do not put your faith in every spirit, but test the spirits to see if they are from God. For many false prophets have come into the world. Beware of false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inside they are ravening wolves. You will know them by their fruits. In conclusion, let us remain vigilant in our faith and commit ourselves to supporting our pastors with love and responsibility. Let us pray for them, carry their burdens, and remain anchored in the truth of God's word. May our love for God and our neighbors always guide our actions. May God help us to be faithful witnesses to his grace and truth. Amen. Until next time.